Good morning. How are we still, doing today? You're still in shorts. This is your kind of weather, isn't it? It is my kind of weather. I like it when the weather turns. It brings out the best in everybody, right? <laughs> ben, just start with that uh, drive towards the end of the game where you guys just essentially put the game away. Just how impressive was that from the offensive line and the running backs just to keep eating at the clock? Uh, which drive are you talking about? You're talking about the uh, last one, the next to last one? The 16 play drive, yeah, it was uh, obviously any time, you know, you have the lead in the fourth quarter and can go out and run the ball on your terms. Um, that's exciting. It's exciting for the team. Uh, exciting for the, the big guys really enjoy that. Uh, not just the big guys, but the tight ends did a nice job blocking in the ball game. The receivers did a nice job blocking in the ball game. And then to go out and spread the wealth, you know, give, give a bunch of give. I think we had six guys run the ball in the game, and that was good to see. Which you had Deontay and Chuba, but how about Raheem now getting into the mix and showing you that he can be more than just a returner on special teams? Yeah, we uh, obviously we liked his skill set. You know, when we brought him in here, uh, he can do a lot of things for you. He can, you know, he can return the ball in both uh, both phases. There, uh, he can play out in space. Uh, has a little bit of that receiver skill set to him, but then he can also read it as a ball carrier. So uh, runs that are usually reserved for big guys, he has a pretty good feel for them. You know he presses the he presses the line of scrimmage and can cut off the feet, and there are some good examples of that in the game. Dan, how do you guys make that determination during the game? Because on that next to last drive, you're talking about Deontay was on the sidelines, and, and Steve talked about rhythm and just kind of the way you use them. How do you decide whether it's going to be Deontay or whether you're going to go this direction during the game? Yeah, um, you know you kind of go into the game. Uh, you take previous weeks maybe into into consideration, uh, you know how some things have gone, um, you know, and then take a look at maybe uh, you know the health of, of certain individuals coming off a of bye week uh, certainly helped us out there. Uh, got guys a little bit, fr you know, we were a little more fresh than than maybe normal, uh, but we wanted to spread the wealth a little bit in the backfield and had some jersey numbers on things uh, on the game plan, and that's where you start and. You know, you kind of progress through the game, and if things are going according to plan, you stick with it. If not, you adjust and improvise. And just so hap happens that uh, it, it worked out pretty well for us uh, last week, and uh, you know we had a chance to spread the wealth there. So I think uh, you know the the, ball, the carries were spread out pretty evenly, and uh, got everybody involved, and that was good for us last week. So that was something you knew going into kind of in the middle of the week that there would be that segment where you did want to go away from. Just Deontay to the other two guys. Well, it uh, it depends on how the game goes. Just it would just happen to be those certain that certain package that uh, ended up hitting in the game. And then, like Coach talked about, you know, you, sometimes you ride the hot hand and and what's working, and you just stick with it. And that's how that's how things shook out. Steve Did you made a get any Deontay tape um, when y'all were considering him for free agency? Say it one more time. Did you look at any of Deontay's tape when you were? Considering him in free agency. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I was familiar with him coming out, right? Uh, coming out of college, you know, I like those kind of backs. I like the big, uh, heavy-handed, physical type players. Uh, you know, when he hits the hole, he moves the pile, and those are, I like those kind of guys, uh, especially for this time of year. So I was familiar with them, and uh, I've always kept an eye on them. So I, I was familiar, and, and I've seen his tape. Yep. Anything from those Texas tapes that you can remember now, five years later, whatever. Yeah, just uh, you know, just the way the way he played, you know, the size of, of the back, the skill set he had with the size. He's, you know, he he surprises you with his burst, uh, his burst and his balance when he gets in the open field, um, and just a big punishing back. Steve's made it clear after. since he got here that he wants to emphasize the run. Um, how did he get that message across to you? Well, we just talked about what's the best way for us to uh, to play in the win and. We talk about, uh, you know, I'm a big team guy, right? So uh, I believe in uh, the head coach sets the vision for the football team, and that's Coach Wilkes. And then we work together to try to figure out how to get that done the best way. Make it look a little bit different uh, every week based on who you're playing, but you have to do your best to make that vision come alive. It's going to give you a chance to win games. You know, I'm not a big stats guy, and I'm not a big, you know, all those things. I want to do whatever is going to help us win. Uh, and, and, you know, when you look at our team, you know, pounding the ball gives us an opportunity to win games. I, I know you just said you're not a big stats guy, but Next Gen Stats put out a stat that uh, Sam had 
ball for about 3.7 seconds before releasing it, an average of that against Seattle. Um, a two-part question. With that stat, what does that tell you about Sam, and what does that tell you about the offensive line and how they're functioning? Yeah, I just I think, you know, first thing, it depends on the play category, right? So uh, there, there's a couple different play court categories we have, right? You come out and it can have play action, which is like a five-step drop with a token fake. Then you have your hard action stuff where it's built off the run, you're trying to push it down the field. And then you have movements where you're trying to move the pocket and uh, press the line of scrimmage, take a shot downfield, dump it down, or run with it. Uh, then you have your quick game stuff. Last week wasn't a big quick game week for us, right? So we didn't get the ball out of our hand quite a bit. We, we ran the ball, uh, tried to push it a little bit down the field, and then moved the pocket a little bit. So uh, off the top of my head, he held the ball because of the, the play calls that were in. Also because we had some pretty good protection uh, at times. And the backs did a decent job at times as well. And we still have things we're cleaning up and we're working through there. Uh, but that I think that uh, is probably a little bit of an example of the type of plays that were called in the game last week. Alex, Hi Alex Highsmith uh, is a local kid, played at Charlotte. He's number 56 for the Steelers. Um, he's got 10 sacks and is tied for the league lead for four fumbles. <clears throat> What is, why is he having so much success this year when you watch tape? Yeah, you, know, you see a couple things. He got, has a good get off. Uh, he's a physical player. He plays hard. Uh, you can see his strengths, and he works. I mean, he works out. He's not a guy that he's going to rush, and when you put your hands on him, he's going to stop. He's going to keep working to get to the quarterback. And what, you know, you always say good, about good pass rushers, you know, he's a guy that he's always has that nice lean to the quarterback. So good pass rushers, they never stop working, and they have a pretty good lean. Uh, to the quarterback, and he does those things, and that that helps him get production. Regarding Sam, um, after seeing him face multiple opponents, different types of opponents, um, what do you like most about his game management? Yeah, I mean, game man, uh, Sam obviously he can manage the game. Sam's a smart player. Uh, you know, he's been around the block. Uh, he's played in a bunch of different systems. Uh, you know, if, if the play clock's ticking down, he can do things and make adjustments to get the ball snapped quickly. Uh, he did that in a game last week uh, on, one, on one particular occasion. Uh, he did a great job there. And he's not a guy that's going to essentially, uh, he's not going to panic when the play clock's winding down. He can stay composed, still make good decisions that way. He's a smart guy and he's well prepared. I mean, a lot of guys are smart, but he, he spends the time, he's prepared for situations. and. Um, he's a guy we're comfortable putting the ball in his hands and giving him some opportunities to make decisions. Can you tell us about the evolution of the Arby's package. The evolution of the Arby's package. So that's out there, huh? Uh, you know, Arby's package. We're going to put some uh, put some beef on the field, right? Put the big guys out there and let them go. Let them go play a little bit. We like to use, uh, you know, all our players as much as possible. If you're active on game day, we'd like to find a role for you. Some weeks that's a little more challenging than. Uh, you know than others, but uh, you know these guys respond. We got a good old line room, man. Those guys work hard together. They work together well, and uh, like to get those guys on the field if we can. Is that uh, your idea, though, or theirs, or who? How did it come about? What's that? Yeah, it's. Uh, well, you know, we don't uh, go around giving credit to individualizing people to give credit to. It was a, you know, there are some guys in the room that are really creative. That's certainly not me, but uh, but no, it was. Uh, we just try to get our guys on the field and. You know, the biggest way, you know, the best way we can do it is sometimes come up with some creative names and they have some good fun with it. Ben, did you grow up on Chuck Noel football? I did. Yeah, I did. Can you expand on that? I mean, did you go to games? Or what was well, yeah, I did. Three Rivers. Uh, went to some games at Three Rivers. You know, growing up, you know, you grow up back there. Uh, Everybody has the black and the gold on, on something they own, whether it's their car, the flag in front of the house. It could be the Steelers, the Penguins, or the Pirates. You know, they all have the same colors there. So a lot of pride in football uh, in that area. So it's, yeah, it's a special place to me. It's a special organization to me, yeah. Ben, in the fourth quarter, you guys rushed the ball 17 times, gained 101 yards, uh, seven first downs via the rush of your eight total in the fourth quarter. As a play caller, does that make it easier on you when you just it's rolling and you can kind of just keep spamming the same thing? What was it like up there seeing the same play work over and over and over again? Yeah, that's fun. Yeah. You know, yeah, that's when it's a good time to be a play caller, you know. It's 
you know, th those are the good times. Sometimes it's tough, right? And it's tough, you know, sometimes you got to tap the mic, you know, is this thing on, everything going. But uh, those are the times right there when you get the big guys rolling and you could you could see the, uh, you could see, uh, you know, those guys taking control of the line of scrimmage out there a little bit. And, uh, you know, everybody blocking and the excitement on the sidelines. And even when you spit the ball out in the perimeter, they're being physical out there. And those, you know, that's, a, that's, a, that's something that we, that we like to see. Peel the curtain back slightly if you can or are willing to. Um, what is it about counter maybe on Sunday or just that works for this team seeing those tackles getting the opportunity to pull? Why does that play fit you guys well? Uh, well, we have some pretty good athletes up front, right? So that's a good place to start. You know, we're, we're a physical unit. We have some good size. Uh, you know, Bose is a big center in there. He's physical. He can block back, right? So that helps. Uh, both of our guards are athletic and both of our tackles are athletic. So we can run it not just one way, we can run it both ways, and that, that helps us. Uh, is it a play that you see every week a bunch of times? No, probably not. Um, but last week it was certainly something that, that we got going and called multiple times. Do those guys have fun with that call? I mean, I'll ask them. But... Probably when it works, sure. right? Thank you. Yep. When your offensive line is working as well as it is, is it fun to kind of reward them with? different packages and more and get more guys out there like you, you did in six, seven. I mean, you guys, I know the eight was only used one time, I think, but you've gone with seven and, or six a lot out there. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, number one, uh, it's good to get those guys out there. Every week's a new week and every week's a new challenge. Uh, but we, we have a good tight end room and we have a good old line room. And it's good to mix and match those those pieces together and put, put guys out there and put them in position to be successful. Everybody has a little bit of a different skill set. And, you know, with Cam and with Cade, those guys do a, a tremendous job for us. We can put them out there. They don't need a million reps um, because uh, they work and they prepare the way that they prepare. So they're, they're able to handle, handle multiple looks on different types of runs, and that does help us. But like I said, it's good to get everybody involved. You know, it's a long season, and when you're a backup, sometimes it, you know, it gets challenging. So to, uh, you know, get everybody involved and, Keep them engaged. See, I don't fall for that. I just stay right on track, you know. Has that been in your style that you've had in the past? Or, I mean, have you done more of this than you did in the past? Uh, I, no, I haven't done a lot of it in the past. I think, like, uh, if you look at the offense when I ran the offense in New York and then you look at the offense that, that we're running right now, you'll look at it and you'll, you know, you think it's a completely different guy probably calling it and running it. It's a completely different deal. And I think the most important thing you can do is just figure out what your players do well and – do your best to put them in position to be successful. Some, you know, situations you have to do some things that maybe, uh, you know, they're going to be hard for you, but you have to do them to, um, to make some hay. But, um, you know, we're, we're going to try to do what's best for our team, number one, and then put the positions, the players in position to be successful. And that's kind of the way we, why we look the way we look right now. When you were looking at some of those guys to put at the fullback spot, what was it about Cade Mays? Was it just how athletic he is for his size? Um, that, that he was the guy that you wanted to put back there, and, and yeah. what do you think his his future can be in terms of actually being on the offense? Yeah, well, I think uh, you know he has he snapped the ball right. So when you play center, you're used to making decisions, and it's not a big deal for you. Uh, so he can do that. Uh, he has versatility to play guard and tackle. So now you have a guy that has some versatility playing playing the line, making decisions as as, as a center with the ball in his hands. So you just move him back, and it's usually not a big deal for those kind of guys. And, you know, again, he's a guy that, you know, he gets football. He just has some football, get it to him. Uh, so we thought, let's throw him back there. And, um, you know, Gio went through a little bit there with the, with the injury bug. So let's uh, try to run some things with Cade, see what he can do back there. And, and uh, it's helped us. There's a sentiment that, like on screens, the last thing a DB or a smaller linebacker wants to see is a tackle or a guard or a center at that second or third level. How much does that kind of play into the space game of using Cade at fullback? Is there any like translation to that thought process? Uh, well, the screen, it's kind of a, it depends on what you're running, right? But I'll say this, you know, the game's changed a little bit out in space. Guys can't cut each other anymore. So I don't, there's no DB out there that's real happy about that because that's how they could protect themselves and it would slow the linemen down. But with that being said, the linemen can't cut them anymore. Uh, so, you know, they can juke them a little bit. Uh, so you have to play. There's a little bit of a cat and mouse game that goes on out there outside the numbers when you're in space. So, 
Uh, it, it just depends on uh, the matchup out there. And sometimes the big guys win, and sometimes the, the smaller guys win. And uh, I think timing is really important to all that. And, uh, you know, certainly Cade can factor out there uh, at times. Uh, but it's hard really to get uh, a lot of great screens when you have a two-back look and a big guy in the backfield. Thanks, Coach. All right, appreciate it.